So, see something more than Overpass had in store. A disappointing, underwhelming opening map from one of the supposed hardest teams to put away. VP, well, they were locked out of that one. And now we go to Cloud9's comfort, as you say. Julie's out and aggression towards that B side already. Hobbit, he won't commit. They were patiently waiting. VP in no hurry for this pistol. Seeing if C9 want to make any moves, and they do. Mid stack gets a bit of information, but they'll walk the walk all the way back to the bomb sites, enforcing B, making a read. Is it off prep? Is it off gut feeling? Either way, it's the right one. Yeah, I, I think one thing's been apparent throughout this, right? The desk even said it. There were some uncharacteristic moments in that last game where Cloud9 weren't necessarily playing by the rule book of how you're meant to rotate, the sort of gambles you're meant to look for. But sometimes that's the best way to play up against these jam led teams. And so Cloud9 do that now after not getting contact in mid. They go hunting down through dark and they flush out Jame, who's now going to try and cool his way to success from beyond the grave here. And then they block B long. So it's not like VP can even pounce on that. It might be to be v v VP's benefit avoiding the four man stack. But they can't punish anyone when the kill comes in. And much how the pistol started back on overpass, Jame gets backstabbed and the rest of his team have to lead the way back into the round. Perfecto. A jiggle from the pillar, goes back for a little bit more. He has no support right now, and they're coming his way. Oh, one kill, very fancily done from Perfecto. And now the rotates come streaming out through the heavens. It's the dual Berettas of Electronic that look to be the nail in the coffin, Nor, but he's got to be lightning fast here, both in getting this bomb planted and then in the 1v2, and it should never even make it that far. Axal just runs him down while he's plugging in those numbers, and so a bomb plant is the bare minimum for VP here. All in all, they get more than you can expect, given how that round starts, and that is a bit of a VP classic, but sure, by coming up in round two, Cloud9 still take the comfortable pistol, and as Matthew said on the desk, Starting both halves solid as well. 3-0 up CT, uh, first half for Cloud9. And then even though VP won second pistol, Cloud9 responded, went 3-1 up uh, immediately. So when you have those in a BO1 or in, in a single map, rather, it's just going to give you so much breathing room. It wasn't just that, though. Cloud9 outgunned VP without a doubt when it came to rifle rounds. Will that be the same here, or can VP respond quickly? Running it up to dark. It's Fame leading the way. The molly goes out. He won't commit through. Doing a bit of damage, forcing some util out, but still very much default RVP. Dangerous mid-aggression. Spam is extremely common, but it's only a Tech-9 here, so Mir's going to try sell this one. There's a bait and switch ready, and there's a re-smoke as well. Mir's hands force. He has to avert. Yeah, now, it was left open to accommodate this double mid setup early on, and Cloud9 are aware of that as they peel back in. They know that there could be players in main, and they will look to deal with this faster hit from VP, who run through this main Ooh. side, get into the site. They're going to get that bomb planted. James to get off of it for a moment, but he's rewarded with a kill, and a 3v3 sets in over the B site, but not for long. Mir and James battle back with the limited weaponry between the two of them. They found an advantageous position here. It's all eyes on Electronic dropping in. He's got three bullets to try and do this and James ends it with the no scope. So a bit of an upset early on here for Virtus Pro. Something they weren't able to rely on on that previous map. They come through with the force and they get the results. Oh, a scrappy round. The first swing from Fame feels like it's not even communicated. He runs way ahead of Flit and Cloud9 go two for one up uh, immediately on trades. But then there's a team dink from behind and it all just kind of comes crumbling down. Good post plant bait for Mir in main and Jame is able to hit his shots. Cloud9 now in a position that VP experienced themselves back on overpass. The Pistol round three, 1400 bucks. Holding the util as long as they feasibly can. But VP not respecting it through. Da Ooh. Damn, <laughs> dodge flash. Electronic goes back for some spammage. And even gets out with a Galil. Wow, Damn. the rad, the RNG did him favors there, hitting James down to six. And a gun grabbed. Is there something here for C9? 
Cloud9 were ready to make a lot of aggro moves at the start of this round. They tried walking main, they had two players ready to push out through A as well, but now they kind of go back to a bit more standard, playing within these sites just for the moment, waiting to see what the adjustment is out of VP. Hobbit, that kind of needed to be a kill. It's a bit of damage. Instead, Electronic's got to try and make up for it, and he at least tames this play out through Dark. Exile no. did commit to that A main push in the end. Hello. He wants to chase this bomb down, but oh, he's not going to no. get it. That is a really awkward whiff. The whole round, much akin to how they had one like it on overpass, was kind of centered around just getting that bomb under their control. And with him missing that one bullet required, this one should now get away from Cloud9. It looked so promising. But it disappears in an instant. And on numbers alone, Electronic can't justify going for this one in the 1v3 in spite of the HP on Virtus Pro. Yeah, I mean, you don't know it exactly, not to a T. I think that would very much change the way he played this. He could run everywhere and go hunting, but that hurts for Electronic. Very much let down by his team. Axel, unbeknownst to him, they were in connector. He looked pretty lazy on that clear. I wanted, I would love an interview or someone to ask VP about these UMP buys as well, because I wonder if they know something we don't, because we never see MP9s. We often see UMPs over them, and sure, there are certainly MAC-10 buys for VP. Ooh. But at the same time, this is a team that all of them buy UMPs more than any other roster. Electronic dies at the end trying to get the gun. But yeah, why so many UMPs? That's my question. Jame immediately buys one up alongside Flit in this round. I guess the run and gun is pretty good, but I can't think of what the UMP has that the MAC-10 doesn't. More range? I need to look at the numbers, but... It's been pretty consistent for VP, and I'm going to trust that there's some serious thought behind it. As you sell one of them, get a Mac 10. So a bit of diversity here as VP look to farm some money. And this should be easy for Flitz. Get warm in this game, buddy. You're going to need it. On the edge of elimination here from Katowice. Whoa! Oh, now Outside they're getting him. run at. That UMP is gone. Jay wrestles for control of Dark. Oh, no. oh a little awkward there. Maybe the no. USPs are leaving a great impression here for Cloud9. They've scavenged a couple of guns on the back of it. That AK just out of reach by the looks of things. And so VP almost in two minds. Part of them probably wants to hang around, trying to control getting that gun back, but they, they can't, right? They need to kind of keep the tempo up while they know where all these Cloud9 players are. So they're going to go and take the space over towards A. And honestly, with Mir over here in mid, set up in the window to deny these rotates on any attempt of a retake with no kit for Cloud9, this round probably won't get much more exciting than this. But they can at least do big damage here. And so stopping VP getting established in that regard, I mean, hell, you even heard in that interview earlier on with Dastan where he talked about, you know, how things got so out of hand in that Game of Legion matchup. The economy played the, the, the biggest part of it. Having just some very expensive rounds early on, coming back to bite them in the end. And so Cloud9 are looking to deal maximum damage here. Oh. Terrorists win. No more skirmish at the end. Surprise Hobbit runs away instead of into main and hunts that kill. Could have been a, a bit more damage there at the end, but VP sneak out with three guns. They'll take it. Orb comes in for Jame into this buy round. Perfecto. Actually saving the UMP allows them to play for Orb later, so it's not too bad here for Cloud9. See if they can start strong early on there. Oh, James side. taking a fight here. Molly into main, flash to accompany it, but great counter util to kind of force him away. Get some respect out of the JMAWP. Fleet's been so active of trying to take away this space over towards the connector. Molly's very strong, forces you to have to leave that position. Cloud9 instead are going to have to worry about that a little bit later. Three strong over here towards A. There could be a timer on this, right? There's a world where eventually you kind of don't want to just be sat here for ages with all your resources soaked up at the A site. So they might have looked to come in with some aggression. That smoke kind of 
tease them up to the idea that VP are waiting here. I love that combo. So safely thrown as well. It lets you click close main, get Fame in this pocket position. They can leave him or just come back to him and go for an execute. Flick can trade this kill or just bait for Fame. He needs to be ready. And Fame with the jiggles hits his head. Where's Flick? There he is. Dead is Boomage. A fantastic setup for VP afforded by the smoke molly combo that pushed C9 back. And now there's a split in this site. Electronic has to do the heavy lifting. He had a fantastic game back on overpass. Backstand, oh. but can't capitalize. And so they flush out the point man of Cloud9. Virtus Pro onto a winner here. Hmm. 4-1 up with great positions taken all across the map to kind of tee them up for that A split. And they're even going to remove the M4 right at the close. It's more like it from here. Very quiet game. Very quiet tournament. But hitting some heads here and now when VP are backed up into the wall. They are fighting and clawing for their life. Three round lead now. And a save of the worst gun in the round. So it's not even ideal for C9. Do we suddenly have a game on our hands? It felt like VP were nowhere to be seen on overpass. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting the vibe that James trying to, to make everyone feel a lot more comfortable, right? You can imagine in the discussion after that game, they, they had some very awkward, uh, awkward talks with one another to try and you know build back into this matchup. And there's been some moments where it feels like James maybe been like looking at the mini map, trying to focus and chime in on exactly how he wants the macro to look. But I think that's good, because once everyone else gets comfortable, I think that's where you're going to see James, you know, have that step up in performance again, right? He's just kind of making sure everyone's up to speed, everyone's feeling safe and secure in their spots. This round now, he's just denying the peek out of Ivy, which makes this three-man B-stack feel like only Ooh. two, but they rise to the occasion with the first few kills. Locking out VP. This is getting really awkward really quickly. Mir tries to be the hero. Oh, but he's low on health and he might just look to oh, leave. They're they're running on to Oh my god, they're stuck on each other. And that's gonna force them back into the Deagles, back into the pistols. Jame is spammed oh. out. That is peak awkwardness for VP. It that's gets a really wild in that smoke. And Mir just wanted to leave while he still had the chance, but Jame tells him. No, he commands him. He, he holds him in place for crying out loud. And he forces him to recommit there. And it ends up hurting them. But that round wasn't really lost at that point in the 2v4. It was so much worse prior to that. They get lit up by the Deegs as they're coming out through main. Jame misses a lot of the timings on those AWP shots. Never even really gets to fire it off. Having that player trapped in Ivy, uh, you know, gave a lot of chances to Cloud9. VP think they have room, but there's two more Deagles firing on on a crossfire. Awkwardness in the 2v4. That round certainly was winnable for VP if they were able to pull back. Mir wanted to stop them from grabbing guns, but him and James getting awkwardly, lo awkwardly lost on each other. End the round there for Cloud9. Deagle win. Boomich coming in with an AWP. And I can't say I was enamored by it on overpass, but let's see what Anubis has in store. It's a great map for a CT orb. A lot of options for openers. Yeah, I mean, he didn't, didn't like have a spawn for anything super exciting, so he kind of just has to play this one standard. A spawn against VP doesn't matter anyway most of the time. They're not going to give you that 145 fight. Still yet to get to the bottom of the noise made by the nade, right? Flit, we hear that impact noise. It does two damage. Fame, I didn't hear it. it does a little bit more. I wonder the consistency. We need people in the lab, Harry. Yeah, I think the Unarmored. general consensus is yeah. just that it's extremely inconsistent and that there is no real rhyme or reason. So the only thing I've noticed is when it takes like one, two damage off an armored player, it makes noise. When it takes damage off unarmored player, it always makes noise. But then you hit someone for 50 and there's no noise. So it's, yeah, it's confusing to me what the intention is, if there is one. Axel burning, blinded, Boomage missing, and they're in the sight. 
Yeah, this is kind of awkward for Cloud9. They put a lot of resources into trying to take mid early, and so that's left them with some vulnerabilities. And those vulnerabilities, the soft white underbelly of Cloud9 being exposed. And even though Electronic does deal with Jame, he's super wounded in that fight. And they can't justify attempting this one. VP have done a great job of finding the gaps on the back of Cloud9's aggression. There will come a time where the aggression oh. works out for Cloud9. But this round is not one of them. And so very, very quickly, it's going to start to feel like this half is going to get away from them. Nice routing for Norbert. He doesn't hunt that kill, but he's going to go lock off their exit route instead, knowing where they were going. So VPR, they don't have the money to, to lose players on this hunt. But if they find the kills, it's going to completely stop a rebuy for Cloud9. Even one frag here might have consequences. Electronic wins his, Perfecto oh. wins another, and VP won't send any more men into the fight here. They need their own money as well. Cloud9, as far as a lost round goes, it's best case scenario. But VP are still storming on this T side, five to two. Some brutal A executes, Norbert Amir finding multiple entry kills. Two very quiet players back on overpass. Looks like VP has some pep in their step, finally. Timeout used for Cloud9. Gonna try and cook up some answers now. They've not been shy on coming through with this aggro. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, you know, even when you look at Overpass, it was a lot of their success came from the info they were able to grab, in particular in the mid-round. If anything, I think VP are actually playing at a reasonably up-tempo pace for VP at this point in time. And so maybe you're going to look to bring those timings forward a little bit more. You're going to try and nab that info a little earlier in the round. By the time Electronic kind of caught his bearings on the mid-push, VP were already in A. So I hope this doesn't scare Cloud9 into playing back within the bomb sites. Not that I think you could get away with that. They're gonna go double dark. Flash play out, I mean. Oh, the flash gets missed. Axel still goes for it, but I'm for sure and guaranteed Electronic would have called that he missed that flash. And so that's why you see Axel bound back halfway through the fight. Oh dear, a bit disastrous of a beginning because Hobbit fights with them but it all goes wrong because of misutility. Electronic going back for more, he has to, he's been mollied. It does land this time, back turn, James not covered because they're blind, and it's a four on three taken by VP. This could not have started worse for C9. Is there any recovering it? I mean, right now, VP positionally just have so much over Cloud9, right? Even over here in middle, Boomich might just end up getting locked Same. in a fight that proves to be inconsequential in the round, right? They're just kind of keeping him here, and that's keeping numbers for Cloud9 away from B, the true object of this round for Virtus Pro. Suddenly, Perfecto has to anchor Ooh. like his life depends on it, and it's just the one and done. Fame gets that trade, 2v3. I guess you could say this is one of the better spots Cloud9 have been in, so they might hang around, see if anything's given, but they can't justify going for this retake. When VP don't overstep and don't feed them anything, they just have to write it off and save. They can also rebuy because they saved last time, so they have a little bit of spare money. You can get four rifles next round. That's always the temptation, right? If everyone's on zero, oh God, they need to save these guns though. Axel realizes that, pot shot and disappears. And that should be enough of a deterrent. It's like it's moments in, in, in the game that now James should be calling, don't hunt. You should be building your own money anyway. Just a bit of a buffer to fall back on. Buffer VP haven't had in this map, but it doesn't matter when you win every important round. To think Cloud9 not only had the pistol, but then that eco win on B with Deagles. But other than that, it's 6 2. not been stressful for VP when you could argue it should have been. Here's this rebuy for Cloud9. It's VP with a timeout. That's time keeping them focused. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's always so exciting about VP is kind of how they manage that pressure on the extremities, right? How they're able to shut down these info plays that feel so important to get when you're playing against VP. And this is the issue, the kind of impossible problem that Cloud9 have got to try and solve. They know that 
the, if they're able to win this fight out through Khan or through the mid window, that's going to have serious implications on how the round plays out. But every time they've gone for it, it feels like VP are good for those kills. Now, last round, it, it comes with a bit of a caveat, right? As you kind of highlighted, it was down to that awkward missed flash to kickstart the whole sequence that led to the downfall of that round for Cloud9. And so once again, they're going to go back to double dark early. This time it's Boomich there with the AWP, but the smoke is already in, so he's going to wait. Has to pay its respects to that one. Nades the smoke, but won't go peeking on the back of it. VP, they expect this aggression as well. And so they are waiting for it. Now, if Boomich could win this fight down the line onto Flit, if he were to make a move, that would be a sort of advantage that Cloud9 have not been used to in this game so far. Or well, Flit even give him the chance. Ollie comes in and Flash. Primed, but not used. Boomich awaits. He's going to re-aggro and try and get that control. You're sort of seeing the protocols here, right? When they don't get that fight in common, when they don't get that early pick, they're going to group. They're going to start to lean back over towards A, and that's exactly what they're doing now. That's what they've done in a lot of these rounds gone by. This time, the adjustment. Cloud9 have this second player nice. ready and raring to go, and Electronic fighting for this main control. Suddenly, there's a bit of onus on Flit trying to open up a backup plan down in the connector. Ooh, Molly is good. Flit's repositioned force, 30 seconds as well. Jame has to make up his mind. He's pulling out of A. There's still two CTs on either bomb site. There is no easy option here for VP. Do they want to give this a go with 15 almost on the clock? Nades getting thrown in, nothing left. It's up to the gunfights. Yeah, 10 seconds. They should, they're should. they not winning this one. Bomb cut loose over in main and three strong in the B site for Cloud9. That quick adjustment to pull Electronic back over towards A. He proves to be a real hero there in just repelling that all-in A offensive. And past that point, VP had nothing left to fall back on. Even though we had that one really nice round for VP where they used the smoke molly in A main to get control and, and get rid of that triple A hold, I'm glad that Cloud9 go back to double A main. They noticed in this map, VP haven't used mid once. They haven't done anything. They've never gone past the doors. Actually, there was one A split rather very early in the half, but otherwise VP haven't used mid. So Cloud9 are blocking it and, and usually going straight back Back to double A main. Right there, they're able to win two fights on electronic, burning out a player in the corner. So, lack of mid control for VP. Cloud9 have recognized that fact. Another heavy B stack, the mid player already falling back at 126. And C9 using their util very well in the CT side. VP looking like they want to explode B. They've got low money. It's a perfect round for a Tech 9 pop. And this is almost the conditioning thing, right? The idea that so often whether or not VP go B is based on the success of a fight through the connector. And because Cloud9 haven't given that away early and they've been used to seeing these A plays, you kind of have a pretty heavy A lean out of Cloud9 right now. They're getting a lot of util starting to take shape over here towards B. I'll go through that. But it's not enough yet to say that it's the commitment. However, it will be from Virtus Pro. They come through main, they try to take Dark. Locked out is the first man by Hobbit. Perfecto wrestling oh. with the AK gives us even more. And so that attempt to split B, five players here running into a two-man hold is held back by Hobbit and Perfecto. Good counter util out of Hobbit down in dark to put a stop to that push. And Perfecto looks real clean with it. Having to just carry that spray on for the double. A non-starter of a round for Virtus Pro. He's still trying, Unless though. they can find this way in now. Oh, the bait. Uh, set up. Oh, Axile getting caught. Still shouldn't be a worry, you want to say. The orb should be able to stop the cross. Boomers commits. He knows one shot wins it. And even though it's a miss, Electronic saves the day instead. This orb is not hitting a shot in this series. It's hurting to watch. My goodness. It doesn't matter the Cloud9 are winning rounds. You wonder why the hell they're buying this weapon. It's actually painful. It's a great block at B though, like you said. It's one thing to send one half of your execute through a smoke, but VP are pushing the dark smoke and the B long smoke at the same time. That was a round made for Cloud9. An ugly start for Perfecto recovered very, very well. And Electronic has kept up his form from the previous map, currently top of the server again. Boomage goes wide this time for the fight. 
the 3B start, an early, I say execute, there's not a single bit of utility for this B here. They're just going to flood in. Double Dark can get awkward here up against Ooh. the pistols, and that dink landing immediately is actually a big problem. Now these Dark players are left fighting at incredibly close ranges, and VP don't even have to give them these fights. They'll instead lob in that smoke from Perfecto's no body. No way it's done. And they've used that to lock Cloud9 out oh of the round. My. The Temple push nails Electronic. And so this sudden uppercut, this sudden pace change, the contact nature of it does catch Cloud9 by surprise. All right, go on. This is going to have to be very last second here. They've got kits available. Smoke goes out onto the site. Pop is spamming his, but surely no way you're winning this with under 15 seconds left. They jump through. Someone just has to get on that bomb right here, right now. It's a good plan. It's not ready for VP. They can't find it. Down on CT side, and Norbert wins another with the pistol. It's going to be everyone dead, it feels, but VP get away with a nonchalant round. They come in with pistol armor, not a speck of utility and it's the instant dink on Perfecto that seals the fate of Cloud9. They get shut out of that B-bomb site. Not ideal. You want to, if you're Cloud9, you just tell yourself it's unlucky, right? Like the B-holds have been good in this, in the last few rounds. But Perfecto getting insta-bopped by a P250 the second they swing. And then you're locked out of dark with utility. See, I just think, like, big picture, that round's been a while in the making, hasn't it, right? With all the attention that's been put on these fights over towards the T-stairs and for this dark control, Ooh. the last thing you were ready for was for a five-man contact play out through main. VP know that they've been running double dark. They use that against Cloud9, and this round, they look to retake the ownership nice. of the connector. Fame lines up a blinder, and Norbert, exploding out through the main side, is able to deal with Perfecto. Axile's got no pl no place, no part to play in how this round plays out. He's rotating into a lost site 1v4. Yeah, they figure it out at the end of the half. I love, we go from all these mollies used in con every single round at dark, and then James just dry fights with an orb, catches Hobbit on a jiggle. Nice change for the last round of the half. Axile, a hope and a prayer, and an exit that VP will find. It's a dominant T side. We couldn't get it on overpass, but it will be allowed here on Anubis, waking up just when they needed to. Jame will close it, and Virtus Pro are here to play, trying to avoid elimination from the play-in of Katowice.
When we first embarked onto this map of Anubis, things were looking dire for Virtus Pro after a pretty shocking revelation on that first map when Cloud9 were able to close it out. This felt teed up for a Cloud9 victory. Now the VP on a map that they've never succeeded versus this Cloud9 squad on before, go ahead and post their best T side yet versus this team. Clearly, Jame has been learning. He has been extracting all he can from these past encounters, and he's brought it all to the field today. They sit in the lead 8-4, and it's Cloud9 left on the back foot. Yeah, right now it's looking like the opposite of the series. These two teams played against each other last week in Copenhagen, where VP dominantly took over pass, and Cloud9 responded with a close Anubis. The question is, does Cloud9 have more in the tank? to make a strong T-side recovery, or are we destined for Ancient? A map that has been troubling for Cloud9 as of late. VP looking to long out a series as they often do. But it all begins with this pistol. Heavy on A, four players looking for a full retake B setup. And Cloud9 may be biting the bullet soon Rotating into the more stacked site of the two. The smoke, especially when you use, on a pistol round, a smoke is so powerful on CT because if Cloud9 throw and execute and Fame smokes it, they might still just go through because they've got to use everything on one hit. We'll see what decision they make and what the timing of Fame smoke will be. But this is an A hit, at least yeah. intended. If one thing has been very clear, it's the VP are super prepped, so... Even in this pistol round, a solid oh, idea for what they want going on. on. And Flip pulls the blade. Ends up dealing with Boomich. And now it's only Axile left standing. Beautifully put together from Virtus Pro. Wow. They even make out like bandits with a knife kill. And I think James got to deserve a lot of credit here. It's clear that he has got a serious game plan for how he wants his yeah. boys to approach Anubis. They pick up the pistol in this second half. In that first half, it was Cloud9 to win it, but they immediately ended up falling down versus the VP force. The value of that A main smoke as well is it allows all of VP to fight the middle split first for Cloud9. So there's, there's three out of four eyes or pairs of eyes looking towards the camera split. And yeah, when you're out of ammo, sure, pull out the shank. A bloodied blade in the bear's hand. Cloud9 full eco, one P250. So this is double digits, however you cut it. Jamie is looking to buy a third round AWP. Surprise Flit didn't drop him one in the second. We see that a lot. Whoever gets the most kills in pistol often is James Fund. There's a chance for some big money to be made here if your name is me. And his name is three kills nice. from the man over in middle. And so sure, Axile gets out with one, but there shouldn't be too much more damage to get Ooh. found here. That push back in the dark from Flip proves to be one step too far. And so Electronic's now armed. Let's see if he's deadly. Fame gonna try to find the swing through Ooh. the window. Missed shot from Axile. And Fame just keeps sailing past. Looking just for this player up through the stairs, but Electronic will never give him this fight. They know there's a man lost over in middle right now, so hell, why not follow through on the A play? VP are aware of this reaction. They're trying to bring Norbert around in time, and he will get here to support Jame, who only has that USP. It might actually be a limiting factor in this round. He's got to go for the gun now. 13 seconds. The stick comes in. Knives are out, and Jame will fight back. Well, now he can wait for fame on the big flank. Axel has to make a play and push forward. Jame knows it. Great reset back into spawn and fame coming from the flank axile lost him he knows james should be in storage right now but the headshot is clean very well played from the captain baits just enough to win that round for vertis pro but what an attempt for cloud nine with only four glocks and a p250 a bomb plant and a triple kill i'll take that every day of the week however this late in the game it's about whether you can capitalize it or capitalize on it or not Jane will have his AWP straight away.
R9 immediately go looking for some control over towards B, but if they go peeking this with the side smoke down, oftentimes this is a nice fight. However, Jame finds this angle over the top. Gonna play in tandem with Norbert in at the back, and the two of them here is a powerful setup. Cloud9 learn about it the hard way. Often a nice way to go about trying to harass that B site. With the left side smoke down, you remove a lot of options, and the aggression keeps coming through for VP. They get a fight there, but it's not without, you know, some gain. They still have a 4v3 here, and they get the info that Cloud9 had multiple bodies outside of B long. So that only opens up other avenues on the map here, 4 versus Pro. Swing in middle. I mean, you just saw three players there, so Fame is at least ready to get fought here, but will that make it? Oh, oh that's awkward for Axile. Yep. Just misses the timing, but still gets out with the kill. Jay moves in. I think up until now, he's been very focused on managing everyone else, but here it's all about Jame and what he's able to do. You saying it's Jame time? You might be right. He's made the wrong gamble, and Cloud9 will get that bomb plant on A, so it's going to force a save here for VP against their will. One missed shot. And even despite Axile's failed flash, the fact that he survives without even getting traded or going one for one, well, that forces VP's hand out of the round. And that's after, remember, Norbert goes five on three up by fighting B main. Cloud9 go for engagements. The VP never once attempted, which is just, you know, swinging B main hallway and looking for an entry. They lose two players and they mid round it through middle to A. Nice grouping, but a bit of a wasted opportunity for VP, it feels like, to put this game to rest quick. Yeah, for Virtus Pro, you know, even with that save, these are going to have to be the kind of standout parts of the round. They juggle around the guns. They actually end up giving it to Flit. Norbert is the one to pass that over. So in spite of the fact he sits top of the board, he arms Flit, who does have the spawn, but won't elect to do anything with it. No crazy main peak to come out today. And with this smoke down in dark, he just ends up playing the pillar. They do want to. They do want to peek this. They want to go back to flashing and fighting for B main. And so that's why they give Flit the rifle. But Cloud Nine, they are set up very passively over here. In that same vein, VP will just take the info, right? They peek out long. They don't commit to any sort of wild flank. They just immediately adjust on the back of it to full stacking this A side of the map. Bomb's not committed. You wonder if Cloud Nine will ever pull out of this hit. Right now, VP don't even have the full info. There's only Electronic actually in. Flit's knife out, thinking this is a fake, getting inside of the smoke. And this could go very, very wrong for him. Him and Electronic are back to back, oh. and neither of them even know. Flit's going to oh find out. Oh, my God. He's going to find out. You They're think? next to each other. They're what? next to each other oh right now. Oh, he's seen him. He's seen him. <laughs> that one's free. Flit has a chance to do something here. It's a lot of damage. And it makes it a little easier for the pistols, but the rest of the gang start falling like flies. And this one breaks into a 3v3. Cloud9, do they want to follow through? Do they want to stick to their guns? It will mean getting past this three-man stack. A good nade onto fame. And they don't look committed just yet, but time is of the essence here. They can sneak yeah, for a mo it. moment. Nice. Noise has got to be made eventually. And they'll just start running it up towards the connector. Axel needs to get that smoke in Temple straight away to stop an instant rotate. Even though VP are heavy flanking more so, that's a great call for Cloud9 to just run the whole way. They know at least two players were there. That's enough info. Bomb gets planted and Cloud9 get comfortable. Man, to think the whole time Electronics is saying, guys, join me, get ready, get grouped. I have great position. And then he dies first. And still Cloud9 come through with the round. That's back-to-back -back robberies here. From the boys in blue. Another saved orb left to the wayside for Jame. Ooh, big damage. 
Oh, but knows he's got this fight guaranteed. Can take it when he pleases. He looked very confused there where Axel had gotten to. But still, an exit on the way out. And a rebuy can be justified here by VP. I can't believe this. Funnily enough, you know, if he got in that kill like half a second later, it might have been on an even better timing for those teammates, you know, yeah. joining Electronic through main. But Flit's never to know that fact. Just take that kill while you got it. We've already seen players go for knives and be let down in this match. I'll let you scrape the VOD. Even though Cloud9 win that round, they follow this up with a timeout. They don't like how close it ended up being in spite of how little Virtus Pro bought with them. Well, they know they're being read as well. Like both rounds, they've come back from disadvantages and, and won it in the mid round, clutched it out in three on three or three on five, if you go back two. So the plan isn't working, but the calling is good. Boomich for providing value there, even if it's not in his orping. Oh, look how deep Electronics got. It does tick that molly, but I think they're far enough away that it wouldn't have come through for VP. We're about to find out, though. A main getting faked by Axel. He doesn't want to play first with his entire team in middle. Mir just trying to block an A split. As soon as he gets contact, he can drop his smoke, and that might force Cloud9 to go for a temple play. But Ooh. hey, they say fine. We don't want camera anyway. And that's going to pull some wool over VP's eyes. They have to make adjustments, and that will be through Beach. They are really blind in this round. Cloud9 are surrounding the B-bomb site. This is very uncomfortable for VP at the moment. They don't know what's going on. Yeah, they're trying to remedy this by taking all this space out through dark. This might be look a... at how paranoid they are, right? Yeah. Like, they could be out through middle, they could be in CT. Norbert's having to watch both his back and his front. Now they hear it. So now they know it's out through main. Great damage on that initial bit of util from Norbert. Can he offer anything else in this round? He's smoked off and brushed to the wayside. There's a fight down here for Khan. It's one for one out of fame. Boomich returning from the Ooh. temple, but it's Flit on the backstab to make contact next. Boomich hears the footsteps up through CT. They're right here. Swinging on out. Can't quite find it. An awkward duel for the man at the helm of Cloud9. And Axel Ooh. perishes next. Perfecto backs up into the JMAWP. And that round is nabbed by Virtus Pro. Even though they're flying blind for a lot of it, some great moves in the mid-round. Fame kind of taking that space down through Dark, just confirming their suspicions. It's not looking like the A play. Then Norbert with a very well-timed nade onto main. Virtus Pro, they have clearly done their homework here. Yeah. Even though that flank down Canals looks like it's going to be VP's undoing, because it means they don't have anyone really at B. Norbert smoked off, as you say. It just gives them such a good timing uh, for the B for the B main flank on that retake. And Norbert's looking nasty in this map. He's had some great rounds. You know, some of them lost by his team. Remember that double kill at B main? But right there, hit some blinders. Current top performer in the server. 11 to 6, and Cloud9 with what may be their final full buy. Gonna go back to what's been working, these A splits. Oh, that shot fired oh, off. Oh dear. Kind of throws Mir's mental timer off. Axel, great opener, yeah. but swiftly returned to from Jame who now finds his flight or fight going off. Gonna take a bit of room over towards main, trying to make it so he doesn't have to worry about that back line anymore, but there uh -oh. is a player here, back turn, Perfecto moving in for the kill. Timing's everything, Jane will start to consider this eventually, and the time is nigh, but Perfecto finds him, still has an awkward 1v2 to embark upon. Trades out that AWP for a Galil. Made into the heavens, one more smoke to try and complicate matters. 
VP trying to tie this one together with a double swing on that plant. Perfecto taps it, but he doesn't get the peak he's hoping for. VP anticipate the fake. And so they don't give him this engagement yet. Swinging out from oh, the heavens nice. does hand one to Perfecto. This guy has been a rock in some of these anchor positions. Now it's in the clutch that he's got to come in for Cloud9 to deny match point to Virtus Pro. And what is often the home map of this team. And it's King Norbert on the other side to go against, who perfect. hits the perfect timing. He is in a flow state right now, and he shuts out Perfecto. This is a great game from Norbert. He's been selfless across the board as well, willing to give away these rifles, play with a pistol in the four spy rounds. And he even adds a little clutch to the tally now. Yeah, causes bluff on two fakes, walks on the third one, and just beautiful timing for Norbert. No hurry. And that will shut out Cloud9. Not even the bomb plant to give them a bit of bonus cash. This feels like a three mapper. Certainly. Just Boomich on a rifle, and he has had a cold and quiet map himself. Oh my goodness, Electronic always finds a way. There's an orb. Flip may be spotted. Seems like Perfecto has a, an inkling here. Bomb is back in spawn. Cloud9 have no plan. They are just letting loose, trying to find opening kills. Electronic won't be given another chance. Me is going to back out of middle. Can re-smoke as well. Orb gets thrown onto Hobbit. Electronic just goes like, Any, anyone can <laughs> anyone, have it. I just yeah, don't want it. Anyone. Everyone on this team. Yet no one. But still, he's been able to deliver that opener. And I mean, hell, that was his whole aim of the game back on overpass. The entries from Electronic were stellar. So maybe that can try and bring Cloud9 back into the fold. Hobbit does it with the Ooh. tech. Perfecto follows up on the Deagle. Mir backed into a corner here, but a missed shot from Hobbit's AWP. And that missed orb shot might just be the undoing for Cloud9. Wow. It crumbles around them, and it's Virtus Pro to pull that one back. Two players left standing, and a missed orb once more from Cloud9 seals the deal on Anubis, and the score instead will be settled on Ancient. Yeah, just when you're ready, you're right off VP from another series. After another poor first map, they come through with a 